what I'm guys, Sunny aka the Random Recorder here. And so today, I am going to be doing my trailer breakdown of the Avengers Endgame trailer. And I just want to let y'all know, um, this is going to be one of those long Random Recorder videos, you know what I'm talking about, where like, it shouldn't be that long, but it is, because I watched the trailer again, one more time, once, just once, and uh, off the top of my head, I'm in Microsoft Word right now with some notes that total up to 931 words, and that, that, is two, that is two pages of notes, not two full pages, like one and a half of, of no notes based off of this one trailer alone, like literally only this. Uh, so I don't want this to drag on too much, because, like, no one's going to watch it if it's that long. So let's just get right into it. Let's just jump into it. So the trailer obviously starts off with Tony recording a message into the still broken helmet uh, that obviously takes place after the battle on Titan. I'm not 100% sure if he's actually going to send this video, because helmets, as far as we know, themselves can't actually fly. And on top of that, like... If he's in, you know, dead space, I doubt there would be any kind of, like, radio transmission. But then again, he is Tony Stark, so it could be. I'm not gonna, you know, discount Tony Stark. Even Thanos knows him. Now, this is probably on the Milano, which is the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. I was confused at first when I figured that out, when I realized that, because I was like, wait, then what happened to the Guardians of the Galaxy? And then I realized that except for Groot, uh, not Groot, <laughs> except for Rocket, they were all... Uh, dead and that would make sense because Tony has taken it so that he can get home But it's interesting because he he notes that his food and water are out and Which is interesting because Thor actually takes some of their food and water in uh, Infinity War <laughs> I just feel like I could have lasted another day if Thor hadn't taken my food No, but um And his oxygen will run out the following day now obviously we know that he's going to make it home, and I personally speculate that Captain Marvel is going to be the one to rescue him, because as far as we know, her and Thor, actually maybe not even Thor, are the only Avengers capable of actual space travel. So that's how I perceive it. After that, we get this really interesting shot of what appears to be Thanos' armor uh, in a, in a T-pose, I think is what they call it these days, those kids uh, from, from uh, Fortnite and Halo, I don't know. But um, anyway, in all seriousness, it's obviously Thanos' armor, and he's turned it into a scarecrow. He's hung up his armor and retired. And that is obviously, it looks like the same planet as the one he's on at the end of Infinity War. And uh, the Russo brothers, I think, themselves actually called that Titan II, which makes sense. It's his new home. And per, uh, directly after this, we get Thanos actually walking through a field of flowers with what appears to be the Infinity Gauntlet still on his hand. Now, I found that personally interesting because that would mean that, like, he hasn't hung that up. Like, his arm and the Infinity Gauntlet still look like a big burnt chicken nugget. You know what I'm talking You know what I'm talking about. It looked like a burnt chicken nugget. Anyway. And... I'm sorry, I We then hear Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow narrating. She explains Thanos' snap to someone. Now, the Avengers Endgame Premier comic, uh, that was released, I think, two days before the trailer. We actually learned that the snap is known as the decimation by everyone that isn't that lonely. And no one knows who Thanos is, or that the heroes being unable to stop him is why the decimation occurred, or why half of all things died. And the fact that she's explaining this was kind of interesting because all of the heroes, with the exception of Hawkeye and Scott Lane, know what happened. And so it'd just be, it'd be weird, uh, like, that he, um, that she would be explaining it to someone because they would all know. So it's definitely either going to be Hawkeye or Ant-Man there. I, I, or maybe both. I don't see it being anyone else. We then see Bruce Banner, and he's kind of looking at a report of who died in the decimation, or actually, more accurately, who's missing. So we see the names of three people, all of whom we know. That is Scott Lang, Peter Parker, and Shuri. So we, what, was actually, what was interesting about Shuri was that we never actually found out that she died. And, that, and I, I very much feel like that is on purpose, because I, I think if the Russo brothers wanted to show... Uh, Shuri's death, they would definitely show Shuri's death because she is next and she would be like if Katara died, she would be the one to take the Wakandan throne. And so it'd just be surprising to me if, if they were considering her dead but never actually showed it in the film. On top of that, obviously, you know, Scott Lang, he isn't dead, he is missing in the quantum realm after the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp. 
After this, we hear Steve Rogers, and he's now narrating. And while that's happening, we see Nebula, uh, Gamora's sister, and, and she seems to be on the Milano again. That's the Guardians of the Galaxy ship. And she looks like she's comforting someone that's likely Tony Stark. Remember, she was also her and Tony were the only survivors of the snap who were on Titan, so it makes sense for them to be leaving together. After that, we get probably my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the trailer. We see Lint Martin, Hawkeye himself, in Japan, hunting down what looks like the Yakuza, which that is a sentence I never thought I'd say. Hawkeye in Japan. Hunting down the Yakuza. So yeah, that could that actually points to him probably taking one of his uh, other identities that he has in the comics, and that identity is called Ronin. And, uh, and I found it interesting that Cap, while he's narrating, he says, we lost family and we lost a part of ourselves. And while he's saying that, it kind of uh, cuts or fades into the Ronin scene, or the Hawkeye scene, whatever, if you want to call him Ronin. I guess we can call him that now. And, and I think, because he's just about the only adventure that we know had actual family, so to see him you know, take on the Ronin scene, that's kind of like the ultimate Ronin scene, because he's the only one who's able to do that. And I think that he's just about the only adventure that we know had actual family, so to see him you know, so it would make sense for his family to die, and for the whole lose a part of yourself thing, to just become a vigilante in, in the streets of like, Japan for some reason. I don't know why Japan specifically, he just went to Japan, I guess. So Cap's narration continues, and he says to the team uh, that I, uh, I assure... I feel like that would probably, that doesn't include Stark and Nebula just yet. I think they'll probably reunite later. He says, this will be the fight of their lives. And that particularly piqued my interest because, remember, Thanos, the, the gauntlet is is now burnt and charred. And Thanos He's also in retirement. So he is going to be about fighting, but at the same time, I don't think he has the fine control of the gauntlet that he had earlier when it was brand new. Because it looked really, it looked like it was in really bad shape. And again, we do see him harness it to escape Wakanda, but still, I doubt he'll be able to use it as finely as he was um, in the movie in the Battle of Titan. We see Cap crying uh, on the, in the sunset. Or sorry, that was earlier in the trailer. We see that he has no beard. And I have to say, he looks so much better with that, without a beard. Uh, I, I don't know why people think he looked nice about the beard. I, with the beard. Like, I'm sorry, he was ugly, bro. He, I hated that beard. Ugh, he looked like he had a whole... I don't like a soup trapper on his face. I don't even know. Anyway, though, while he's telling this... We see him wearing the stealth suit from Captain America the Winter Soldier, and I was really happy about that because that's like my favorite Captain America suit out of them all. It's actually Steve, Ro uh, not Steve Rogers, Chris Evans as well, I think. But anyway, we, we then get probably one of the heaviest shots in the entire trailer where Natalie tells Steve, Natalie, Natalie, Natalie tells Steve that she re she's reassuring him about their plan, and he tells her that he does not know what he's going to do if it fails. And that has led to, like, huge speculation on the internet because, like, nobody knows what this plane is. Some people are saying time travel. I don't know. I, it could be that or maybe it could just be, like, going up to Thanos and punching him really, really hard. Now, uh, this is probably everyone's least favorite part of the trailer analysis because now I'm just going to overanalyze the title card of the trailer because this is what it's like to, uh, to be a comic book fan in 2018. We're going to literally analyze... The title card of the movie. I'm, I mean, there's only one small thing, and that is that I like to I like to notice how the parts the Avengers logo is split up into multiple rocks, but they seem to kind of come back together. And I think that could mean that kind kind of reunion for Cap and Steve, or not Cap and Steve. That's the same person. Cap and Tony to come back together and to team up again to fight Thanos. But also, it almost looks like a piece of reversed footage, and I just I feel like that. It hits me in some kind of way, and it almost makes me feel like they might do time travel. I, I doubt that has anything to do with it. But then there's also this next tidbit. When the Avengers logo, what well, not the logo, sorry, the word Avengers is coming up onto the screen. Not not Endgame, I guess, kind of. It kind of has like this translucent, uh, transparent, like a prismatic look to it. And that kind of made me, that kind of evoked the quantum realm for me. And I don't know, maybe it'll have something to do with how they beat Thanos. Maybe they'll trap him there. I'm not really sure. Speaking of the quantum realm, though, we get probably just like this bit of comedy at like the end of this like gritty, sad trailer. And we see Scott Lake has escaped the quantum realm, which he was trapped in after the events of Ant-Man and the Wasp. And something that I noticed was that he was, uh, he was driving actually Luis's truck, which we know houses the quantum tunnel. So... Again, the Avengers do have access to the Quantum Realm at any time uh, as, of, as of now. And fans are going insane about how this might tie, uh, tie into the movie. People are saying maybe... Uh, Captain Marvel has saved him. And I, I, I guess I could see that, but I also think Captain Marvel has saved him. Because, you know, Captain Marvel is a 
Captain Marvel would be in space during the events of this movie just to make it like a lot easier because I don't see anyone else saving Tony Stark. And it'd be weird if Captain Marvel saved both Tony Stark and Ant-Man because I just, I just don't think time would allow for that to happen. And on top of that, part of me does actually think he's a Skrull, which uh, if, you, if you know about Captain Marvel lore, we know that Skrull is a sh shape-shifting race and they can kind of take on anyone they see. But again, I know that's not true because they would probably have never seen Scott Lane or like, the way that that person is talking, they genuinely feel like it is actually Scott Lane in the flesh. But whatever I know, I know it's going to be interesting. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below because the, the speculation and the hype for this movie is just so insane to me. And I really genuinely do want to, I read the comments and I want to know what you guys have to say about this. So leave a like if you enjoyed my trailer breakdown. If there was anything that you think I missed, please let me know in the comment section below. And subscribe if you loved it. We're really close to 100 and uh, it'd be a nice gift to round out the year if uh, maybe we could hit 100 subscribers before the end of the year. Alright, that's all. Random Recorders, peace out.